clothes that you are wearing, so many things. You see, in your dream, it is a child, there is a meaning. You see vehicles, they have meaning. Amen? I saw that I have just, okay, so that one I have read. Um, in the sermon, although I could not recall everything at the time of waking up, I recall saying, these are nuggets to us. This must have caught his attention, the, the attention of the archbishop, since as soon as I was through and sat down, I felt he knew I had picked of, I, I had picked of nuggets from William Branham. As he himself had read. So meaning that bishop was also reading the, message, the, the messages of William Branham. Majority of them read secretary. You hear them preaching very powerful sermons. Then you think it is their, their revelation, but they are only picking what they want to present, never presenting what they think is not going to be acceptable to what people want to hear. So, so he asked, oh, uh, where did you find that? I responded, Eve, he asked me to come with him. I felt like the way an important person would ask you to follow him after a great gathering. The scene change, changed and it's like we are walking from down road going towards the center from Methodist. So who, those who know from those sides, there is a place where you ascend, then you start ascending. It's like a barrier, like a, there is a river there where you have to cross, then going towards the center. Um, as we ascend, there appear small cars from behind, almost threatening to knock us, to knock us. So I asked the bishop to be careful. So we are walking, and there are some small cars that are trying to knock us. So if you know, that one is talking of uh, small ministries. Okay. Then the scene changes again, and I saw that we are in the building with a nice executive office that can fit about five persons. He is sitting there, so I must be, so it must be his office. I saw him from the window. So he is inside an office, a very executive office. That is where he is standing, so I'm looking through the glass. It's like I have uh, rushed to a kitchen in the building. Now, you remember when we talked of uh, the three courts, we said the first court when you enter a house is the living, true? The living, uh, is that the living room? Or we, we start with the kitchen, the living room, then we have the bedroom, true? Sometimes that is how it is, true? Okay. But uh, in the building, either to fetch water, make tea or I'm washing dishes. So there is one thing that I was doing in the kitchen. But I'm telling him from there, you know when Pastor Gaspar asked you during discernment whether you have a crop of maize in your farm, note that it was a crop of maize. Immediately I mentioned this through the window of the, uh, of the room southward. I saw I saw a farm with a maize crop ready for harvest. He wanted you to confirm what God was showing him so that he tell you the next thing. So I'm, I'm telling him this when I'm still in the, in the kitchen. So he is in the other room. Actually, I have passed the, the one which looks like the, the living room or probably where others could meet. So he is in his executive office then there is what looks like the living room or where common people would sit. Then I'm in the kitchen. So it goes, before he seems to have been saying something to indicate to me he is following as we are in different rooms. But I sensed he, is gone, he has gone silent, meaning he probably was nodding or saying something that was encouraging him to keep on, uh, was encouraging me to keep on saying. So I quietly and still three, like the way a cat moves without making noise to catch its prey. Past the room to investigate what is happening. 
But instead of seeing him, I sensed demonic presence from his room. And I was immediately attacked. The demon was in the form of a woman. And I struggled with it. Every time I was about to defeat it, another would appear in the same form of a woman. I saw that I had a sword. I saw that I had a sword. And at one time, I thrashed the sword inside uh, the berry to, uh, to tear it apart. Then another would appear. Yeni, the moment I stab her right in the stomach, you know, when you stab someone in the stomach, most often you will kill that person. So immediately that one is dead, another demon appears or another woman appears. In all this, there is no blood shed, so they are not shedding any blood. This happens in the middle room, not his office or the kitchen where I was previously. This arranged for quite some time, and some other brothers uh, and some other brothers or my brother Peter in the flesh joined me to fight the demons. I woke up terrified. Praise the name of the Lord. The man of God uh, wrote to me on Friday and uh, he told me as he has been in prayers the Lord is showing him that there is a persecution that lays ahead of us. Church, I want to let you know we are in a battle. And what lays ahead of us it is going a turbulent moment. It is a time to fasten your seat belts. If you have, been, you have not been prayerful, this is a time to pray. Amen. Pray more than ever before. The message of the hour has been entrusted in our hands. We have to stand. Amen? Is there any child for dedication? No child for dedication? I once more not encourage you but ask you to have your, your face mask. Remember in the word of God in the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, Samuel told Saul, God is not interested with sacrifice. God is looking for obedience. We are not persuading you. We are asking you to obey. Amen? Whoever you are, whether a minister... Or among the lady, I ask you to obey. If you cannot obey small things, don't think that you'll be able to obey the oracles of God that we are required to obey. There was a time I was uh, in a flight and we were traveling in a Cessna, 13 seater. And for you who, have, who has probably uh, been flown using a Cessna 13 or the smaller Cessna, there is a Cessna that is six seaters and there is a Cessna that is 13 seater. And sometimes I would travel with one who was called uh, Kimodo, and Kimodo was working with UNHCR. And sometimes I would find that he was so uneasy when we were, when we were cruising. Then one day I asked him, why are you always uneasy? And he told me, I'm actually an aeroplane engineer. And when the pilots are making mistakes, I know. That is why sometimes I'm uneasy. Amen? I have been a pastor, and I want to say again, 
Pastoring is not an easy thing. It is the most difficult task among the fivefold ministry. Amen? Please, obey not because of any here, but obey because it is expedient for you to obey. This church, or rather this, uh, this ministry, if it is not for us, it is for those that God has entrusted in our hands. We have come in. For your information, if I will tell you something about the message of William Marion Branham. All, not only about the message of William Branham, the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, go ye out. He didn't ask that we congregate. When we have heard William, Branham, William Marion Branham said, there is no one that is allowed to hear this message twice when there are others out that have not heard the gospel. Amen? One other thing I want to let you know. Some of you here are mothers and others are fathers. I want to say this. When a parent has a child, one way of knowing that the child is fed up with the food, it is when you give the child food, he or she is eating with the seriousness, then there comes a time when he starts playing with that food. True? Then you know that child is fed up. There is no need for you to continue pushing. She will start vomiting. That is what is happening among the Gentiles. The message of the hour has gone all over the world. And if it has not gone, it is right on the internet. It is accessible to all. Whether Muslims, Buddhists, all walks of denominations, they have the message of the hour. So what am I trying to say? I'm saying this one thing. The Gentiles have had enough of this message. It is time, and uh, I'm sorry for um, having you to stand. You can sit down. As, you can also sit if you feel that you're tired. There is something else that I want to tell you. I was one, yeah, just have a seat if you are going to be tired. I was one among those that were really praying for Donald Trump to be elected the first time. And I did not know Donald Trump before. But there, is, there was a time when he mentioned and said, I am, the moment I'm elected president in America, I'll recognize Jerusalem to be the capital city. The moment he said that, and I knew it was in accordance with the word of God. Remember, Daniel, when he was praying, he says, I understand from books that the Years that God had earmarked for the Gentile, for, 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 the, for the Jews, have come to an end. Every time the servants of God or those who are the saints of God understand prophecies all their time when they are looking at the scriptures or what the former prophet said. Amen. So, and uh, when I remembered that, I said, Donald Trump will be my president. And I started praying for him. And I remember when he was uh, announced to be the president, I was right in the office, and I was working. Then I saw breaking news. And the moment I saw it, I entered into Facebook, and I wrote and I told him, Donald Trump, I'm not American. But I'm so happy that you have been elected to be the president of our United States. I'm Kenyan. I have got nothing to do with the politics of America. The moment I sent it, my computer was hacked. And all of a sudden, it stopped. It could not work anymore. And all of a sudden, as a computer engineer and a network administrator, I knew my computer has been attacked. I could not even do anything. I had to switch off. That is called cold booting. You know, you just switch without the, the normal procedure. You either damage your hard disk, but you have to do that. Now, 
Donald Trump, the mom, during his first term, he has already done that. And although there are problems in America, there are chances that he may still come back. I don't know, but there are chances that he may still come back. As many as don't like him, but yet the same, the one God has chosen, he will be in power. He did not stand there as a saint. He stood there like Cyrus. Amen? So, if I'm hard on the internet talking about that, that is my own conviction. It doesn't have to be true. And it's not necessary that he will come. Because when you look at this, the, 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 the Bible prophecy, we are living in a time when the Bible says, let him that is a righteous continue in righteousness, and he who is filthy continue in filthiness. Are we together? So, if we have a president that is coming, and he will not be a president that is God-fearing, expect the whole world now to enter into the Sodom, Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. That is what you're expecting. Every sign that you have, there is a sister who called me during the time of the lockdown. What is happening? This is my conviction. In the book of uh, Exodus, chapter, uh, chapter 12, I believe, when we had the Lord's, uh, not the Lord's Supper, but the, call it what? The Passover feast. If you recall, the Passover feast was held right when they were locked in their houses. That is what God said. Amen? Now, when you look at the next time, the Lord Jesus Christ is having the Lord's Supper with the disciples. They are having it in, in closed doors. True? Now, you realize that this is the only time in the history of the world when the entire world now, the Jews and the Gentiles, have had the Lord's Supper or the communion or, as we call it what? The sa 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 Pasaka. Amen. This is the first time the Jews and the Gentiles have had it in locked doors. You realize that? Amen? Now, this is a wake-up call. They might find, a, you know, a, an antidote for, for coronavirus. But let me tell you, the way ahead is going to be very turbulent. Fasten your city belts. Amen? It is not going to be things as usual in the world. Things are changing. My brother and my sister, if we have a revival that is about to set in, this is the one that is ushering the going away of the bride of Jesus Christ. That I know with all my heart. Why do I know? Because of some things that God has shown me that some of them I don't say. And I know where my message is in the last days. Amen? God showed me and I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you don't talk but there are things that you know you just keep quiet. Amen? The Lord bless you. Let's dedicate this child. Amen. Let's pray. Who is the husband? It's not alone. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning. Our precious sister and uh, the husband, oh dear God, with one heart, have presented their uh, child Stephanie before the elders of the church, that she may be uh, dedicated, oh dear God, that he may be dedicated. And now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, how we thank you, Master, and we bless your holy name. For you are God and there is no other like you, Jehovah. This is a gift, the fruit of their marriage that you've given unto them, O oh dear Lord. We want to thank you, Master. We want to glorify your holy name. It is written in thy word that I do not, uh, not block the children from coming to me. And now, Lord, standing heavenly Father before thee as the ministers of the gospel and the elders, heavenly Father in the ministry, we present Stephanie into your hands, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh dear Master. We know no other.
hands, O dear God, no safe hands, O dear Lord, except in the hands of the Most High, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. You are God who knew this child before, Lord, the child came to earth. And now we commit uh, and commend him, Lord, into your able hands, O dear God, that the hand of the Most High God, Lord, as we lay our hands, Lord, to represent you, Jesus Christ. Lord, you are goodness, Lord. You are master, so dear master. You are divine protection. Lord, shall be upon this child, O dear God. And now as we dedicate him, Lord, unto thee, we pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, claiming for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, O dear master here on earth, that Lord, should you tarry in thy coming, Lord, she, he shall live even the Father to the glory and honor of your holy name. All the forces of darkness we rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we also command in the name of Jesus Christ that no generation now, uh, spirits, O oh dear God, and voices of the departed ones, Lord, shall overlaw on this child, O oh dear God. We put heaven the Father this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, a ring of the blood of Jesus Christ upon the child. Lord, and we also commit the parents into your hands. Lord, provide to them that they shall take care of this child, O oh dear Master. Lord, in their income, Lord, we pray that you shall replenish it. Lord, in their walk, may they also walk in the ways of the Lord. And may they also teach this child to walk after the ways of the Lord. Lord, as may of the gospel, we commend him, Lord, into your hands, to the glory and honor of your holy name, the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, even speaking, that not even diseases, so dear God, not even altar, so dear God, covenant, so dear master, witchcraft, or even Lord, anything of such, oh dear God, that shall come near this child, oh dear master. For Lord, we dedicate the child unto thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, this we pray and we ask. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Shall we stand for the reading of the scripture? Today I will not keep you as I kept you last time. We shall read from the book of um, last time. Yeah. Leviticus chapter 17. Verse. Amen. So today, I would like us to read in the book of Leviticus chapter 11. And uh, I'm not quitting the same thing that we were talking about. So we are along that line, redemption by or through the blood. So today, let's read from verse 1. Now, one thing I want to tell you something about the book of Leviticus. I know you are standing, I'll only keep you standing for five minutes only. Now, when you look at the book of Leviticus from chapter 1 to chapter 10, it is talking about, you know, bringing a believer to God. Or you knowing you are God. Amen? When you come to Leviticus chapter 11 to 27, it takes you towards you now walking with God. Amen? So from chapter 1 to chapter 10, it is, you know, introducing God to you or a believer knowing that God. From chapter 11, from chapter 11 going onwards to 27, it is now a believer walking in there with God. Amen? Now, the Bible says, uh, from verse uh, sorry I was in the wrong part okay uh, from verse 1 today we don't have the projector so kindly read from your word from your bible and the Lord spake unto Moses and uh, to Aaron saying unto them speak unto the children of Israel saying these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and chews the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, all of them that divide the hoof as the camel. Because he cheweth the card, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Amen? We'd read so many things, but
But I just want us to stop at that and go in the book of the New Testament. Uh, we can read from... Uh, let me see. We can read from... Uh, The book of John. Let's read from the book of John. I was looking at Matthew, but I think John should present what I'm about to say. John chapter 6. <coughs> How many we are here with us on Sunday? Kindly let me see by show of hands. Okay, so you'll be able to relate well with what we are saying. So, can we start from verse 51? Because of time. I am the bread of, uh, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Kindly read for us. The Bible says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eats me, even he shall live by me. Amen. So shall we be seated. Now, uh, we are looking at the same uh, sermon that I talked about last time. And uh, we see, we are going to see something. Let me tell you one thing, saints. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, I want to bring you a picture of the, book of, uh, of the book of Genesis. We are not going to read, but I want you to see this one thing. In the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve, there is one thing they didn't do. They were not praising and they were not also worshipping. Why do we have the praising and the worship team in the church? Why is it that when you go before the Lord, you try to sing to prepare yourself? Why is it that most uh, armies of the world they normally have a band or they have a singing ministry among them if I'm going to call it a ministry singing has got a reasons why people sing when it comes to the army and I know probably here there could be some that are of the military or their background is from the military that's where they were working Singing, apart from preparing you, dispels every fear and gives you some confidence and uh, a kind of a morale. Not a morale exact because I'm not getting the, the, the correct word. Lakini nakupatia ile mori. Are we together? And it drives away every fear that you have. Many times you are able to access the throne of God when you have been praising, then you enter into a time that we incorrectly call worship because it is not worship per se. We know that the term worship correctly means obedience. And that I said in the book of Genesis chapter 22. When Abraham was called to go and sacrifice, actually the Bible says, and God tempted Abraham. 
Now, temptation again is a word that has been misconceived. To tempt is to try the strength of something. Or it is to test whether that thing can qualify what it is. Are we together? That is what temptation means correctively in the word of God. So when God tempted Abraham, he did not hesitate but took his son whom he loved so much, whom God had actually delayed his promise in giving him. And when he got him, he was so attached to the son Isaac, then God says, go and sacrifice your son. And that is what God did. And that is what Abraham did. So when he went with the two lads, when they got near Moriah, Mount Moriah or Moriah, the first thing I said, remember, it was three days journey. And each Christian, or sorry, and each believer has three days or three steps that he or she must make. And the three steps is accepting the Lord Jesus Christ salvation, baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and thirdly, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, when Abraham was way off, he saw Mount Moriah, and it was by, or, or the real thing in itself, was God showing him in a moment of time, what happened in the Garden of Eden, why God is asking him to offer a sacrifice of his son, and he also saw in the future that God is going to offer himself a lamb to be sacrificed. Amen? What are we talking about this morning? Not so much today on that. But in the Garden of Eden, if you fail to understand the book of Genesis, you will not also be able to understand the book of Revelation. You should always be able to see where you are coming from and where you are heading. You should know who you are and you should know where you are heading. Amen? What am I saying? In the Garden of Eden, we didn't have praise and worship as we call it today. Why? Because when Man was in unity or had union or had a relationship with God. There was no need to pull the presence of God down. Amen. God, man, Adam, and his wife Eve had no reason to attract God to come down. Remember, they were friends. Marafiki wanatafutana. Amen? And they not only look for one another, what there is, God was dwelling with them. There was no need to sing, to pull the presence of God. There was no need to worship. Man had not been called to worship. God has angels and the other beings to worship him. But man was created to be a ruler or a king or princess, if you are a woman, with him. Amen? So that is what God is looking for. Now, for those also who are new to us, this is what I said last time. I'm sorry for those who are seated outside. This is what happened. In the Garden of Eden, there's something I want to show you. In the book of Genesis, chapter, chapter 3. Uh, the projector is not working, so that also lives together and made themselves aprons. So you see, when they saw that they were naked, the next thing, they sew aprons for themselves. Uh, amen? Now, I want you to see just something that I want you to capture here. 
Now they already realize that they are one flesh. Amen. You see, this I just want to, to bring it to you. There is need for you who is married and you who is, uh, has married to realize that when you come together, you become one flesh. When you become one flesh, there is exchange of blood. And they immediately realized that they are naked and it is not Adam who sewed the, the, the apron or the fig leaves. Amen. It is not Eve who did it. They both did it together. When you are married, you become one and you start working together for your marriage. When one part feels that he or she is making too much than the other, that will be time that marriage you say will break. Amen? I don't want to talk so much on that. Now, I want now the verse that talks about and the Lord uh, cover, um, clothe them with, uh, with the skins. It is still in the same scripture. I'm trying to look for it very fast. Yeah, 21. Yeah, verse 21. Read it for us. And unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. We said last time, the Bible sometimes does not explain you the procedure. So many things, if they have to be written, this word will not, this Bible will not uh, contain everything. So, we know there was something that was slaughtered, and they were clothed with the, with the, with the skins. Amen? Now, that is not what I'm so much looking at. Now, remember, why did God choose the blood? Now, when Eve gave herself to the serpent, the serpent was a lesser uh, creature than a man. Because when you look at God's creation, we looked at that last time, you realize that God started with the lowest of creatures, and we are told by scientists that deep down in the soil, there are some very small organs that are hardly even seen with microscopes. You really need to magnify so much to see them, and they are very necessary for the breaking of the soil. These rocks that you see are broken by those organisms. But man does not know. You look at the stones and then you think that there is nothing living. There are some creatures that are living in those stones. And they break them into particles of soil. So, now what are we saying? This is what we are trying to say this morning. That once we come climbing, then we have the missing link between Adam or between human beings and the chimpanzee. We know that the serpent was a lower form of life. Now, that head, the woman, not allowed to participate some things in the Old Testament, so to speak. Amen? Because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Now, when we come to the New Testament, a woman has been raised higher than where she was previously placed in the Old Testament, in the entire Old Testament, because of what happened. And joining herself with a lower form. Then when we come to the book of uh, Luke, chapter 1 and 2, we see Mary accepting and saying, the first thing she asked, how shall this be, seeing that I know no man? Then the angel says, the power of the Most High shall come upon you, shall overshadow you, and that which shall come upon you shall be called the Son of God. Amen? So, now, whereas in the beginning, the first woman, Eve, joined herself with a lower form of life, when it comes to our other woman who is Mary, 
she joined herself with a higher being. Amen. And joining herself with a higher being, which was God himself, now a woman has been laced into a status that she was, she could not previously be able to serve in the Old Testament. Amen. There is no longer any cleanness in the woman. Now she is clean the same way a man is clean before God. I hope you got that. Now, we also have read now where we have read in the book of Exodus, in the book of Leviticus chapter 11, going to where we have read. It is very important for you to understand this. Now we are getting into the message. Leviticus chapter 17. So it's Leviticus chapter 11. Where our brother read for us. So the Bible says. Verse 3. Now what we were looking for. Last time. Talking about. Uh, redemption by the, the blood. Or ukombozi kupitia kwa dam. Why is it important for us? Kwa nini ni ya muhimu kwetu sana? Kwa sababu ni lazima tuweze kuelewa mwanzo mambo ya livyo fanyika na ikuwa ni kifuli ama kifuli na katika agano jipia tunaona utimilivu wa kile ambacho uh, ilikuwa ikionyeshwa uh, katika kifuli. So, one thing you remember on Sunday we read that a Jew was not supposed to eat blood. Amen. We also saw that the strangers among them, wale ambao walikuwa sio wayahudi, lakini walikuwa miongoni mwao, pia hawakuruhusiwa kula damu. Ama kunywa damu. Bwana asiye sana. But God put so much uh, attachment with the blood. Mungu akaweka umuhimu mkuu na uzito mkuu kuhusu damu. Na akaweka vipengele ambavyo vilikuwa minakataza wana wa Israeli wasije wakanywa damu. Bona se sana. Why was it so important? Because God wanted whenever they think of blood, they loathe. Or they abhor it. Do you know what abhorring means? Yani ukiona unatetemeka. Unapata msisi muko ndani yako. Alikuwa kifanya hivyo kwa sababu gani? Ili aweke kuogopa ama kuheshimu damu. Bwana asiye sana. Kwa nini alikuwa anataka waweze kuheshimu damu? Ilikuwa ni damu ya kawaida ili wakati damu ya kweli itakapokuja, mwanadamu atafahamu umuhimu wa damu. Wana si sana. Ile ilikuwa ni katika mifano, lakini sasa mungu katika agano jipia, na bako pari tumesoma katika Yohana Sita, pari ambapo ndugu yetu ya tuzomea, anasema kwamba, asie kula mwili wangu, na asie kunywa damu yangu, hana sehemu na mimi. Wana si sana. Kwa hivyo, Habari ya kula ama kutokula damu kwa watu wa mataifa wasile na kwa watu wa Israeli okay, kwa watu wa mataifa wanakula kwa watu wa Israeli wasile ilikuwa inaelekeza damu Hilo tumeliona Bwana asiye sana Now Looking at that verse we are presented with another example now, the Bible says, from verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. How to do a nyama ambao mtakao kula ama mwenebusu wa kula ambao wako katika ulimwengu. Verse 3, whatsoever parts the hoof, yote ambaye kwato zake simegawanywa. 
kwato za wanyama ambazo zimegawanywa. Bwana asiye sana. And as cloven footed and choose the card. Na ambaye inafanya nini kwa Kiswahili? Hapana, zote zinakula majani. Brother Obondo is telling me kwamba ile ambayo inakula majani. Now, what is chewing the card? In our language, we call it godagumia. So, what do you call it in your language? Kambula. Kambula. Ongea kwa sauti. Kambula. Apo? Kambula. Do you understand what it is? So, an animal that when it goes to the field inakula kwa pupa lakini badala ya isiege inachukua tu ikiweka kwa mfuko inachukua tu ikiweka kwa mfuko then inaenda inaketi mahali inatoa ile chakula inairudisha kwa mdomo inaanza sasa kusiaga pole pole na wakati inaposiaga pole pole it is done so that the body can be able to absorb it. Amen. The blood can easily be able to take the nutritious parts kwa sababu ya huyo mnyama. Amen. Are you having a look at that? Now, something else. Nevertheless, verse 4. This shall he not eat of them. This shall he not eat of them that chew the card. Kwa hivyo kuna wengine ambao wana chew the card. Kwa Kiswahili sijui ni nini. Bwana asiye sana. All of them that divide the hoof wana wanarudisha chakula wakisiage lakini Nevertheless, this shall he not eat. Kunazo ambazo ham takula, wale ambao wanarudisha chakula wasiage, or them that divide the hoof, na wame, wame kwa tozazi zimegawanywa, as the camel, because he chewed the card, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean to you. Tunabewa mfana tunambiwa kuamba, kuna wanyama kama ngamia, ambao wana rudisha chakula wakisiage lakini kwa tozao hazija gawanywa bwana asiye sana now what are we talking about here you should know uh, with all humility that uh, when you get when you get the word of god amen all of us, me included, when the preacher is preaching, there are certain things that you don't hear or understand. How many know that to be true? Have you ever tried to listen for the second time a preacher's message and you hear things that you did not hear when he was preaching? Amen? Now, all of us hear the word of God. Kila moja yetu nasikia neno la Mungu. This was an example. Everything in the Old Testament was a shadow. Now, it pertains to a time in life when a believer hears the message. Amen. When you hear the message, you are required to go and sit down and bring it forth and you start meditating upon it. Bwana si sana. Unaanza kuisiaga wakati wa pili ukiwa na umakini na usikivu ili uweze kuelewa kila kitu. Amen. But that is not the final thing. You are told that the hooves also must part. So kuna wanyama ambao wanarudisha chakula lakini kwa tozao Hazija gawanywa. Hiyo inakuambia kwamba kuna waaminio. 
Amen? I hope you are awake and you are not carried away. Kuna wa aminio. If there are seats that you can probably put here, some ministers come here when you are part of it. If we can, if ministers can take their seats, now, this is what I'm saying. Kunawa miniyo, ambao, Baada ya kusikia neno la Mungu wana lileta tena what is to meditate kwa Kiswahili wana tafakari neno la Mungu lakini kuna kasoro moja ambao inayofanyika kwato zao ukumbuke katika Leviticus chapter 17 what did we read Kwamba ni lazima kuwa ni mkuu angepakwa damu katika the ear rope si ndivyo na apakwe katika kito, kidole cha kush, cha kulia na pia apakwe katika kidole cha mguu cha kulia si ndivyo sasa tunaambiwa kwamba ni lazima pia kwato ziwe zimegawanywa Kuna waminio ambao wanaosikia neno la Mungu wanalitafakali bwana si sana lakini kuna jambo moja ambao hawafanyi hawajatenganishwa na ulimwengu mambo ya kidunia ya ngali yanawafuata bwana si sana kwa hivyo neno la Mungu halihitaji tu Uwe kwamba unaposikia neno la Mungu unalipokea na kisha unakati chini unalitafakari kama kwato zako hazijagawanywa hiyo yote ni kazi bure Nilisema kwamba hatuko katika wakati wa reformers Tumeondokea wakati wa reformers Tuko wakati wa urejesho kwa injiri ya baili hubiriwa mara ya mwisho. Ujumbe wa mara kae 4-5. Revelation 10-7. Matthew chapter 17. Wana siya sana. Hiyo yote inakuelekeza katika kitu kimoja. Nayo ni kurejeshwa kwa injiri kamilifu. Na nikasema kwamba ukitazama katika Revelation 10:17. Okay, Revelation 10:7. Ukienda hapo chini kuna jambo lingine linafanyika. Mungu anaondoka katika huo ujumbe wa kurejesha na bibi harusi anapokea ujumbe na ili aweze kuprofesai mara ya pili. The Bible says Thou must prophesy again. Who is prophesying again? It is not William Marion Branham. It is you as a believer that now starts prophesying. Amen? How do you start prophesying? The first thing in the book of Revelation 19.7. In the book of Revelation 10:7, where is he? In Revelation 19:7, he is gone. <laughs> Who you read it for us? Okay, sorry. Revelation 19:7. Listen to this. The Bible says. Listen to this first of all. If you invited me, or if you called me, and you told me, Brother Hillary, I would like you to come and assist. I would like you to come as a certain day. I will ask you. My brother, my sister, well, you are inviting me, what kind of a job or why are you calling me? Sababu gani ni nauliza kwa nini unaniita? Amen? Are we together? Why should I be so keen or particular why you are calling me? Kwa sababu nataa kujua Unaniita ni kupeleke pahali ambapo ni paheshima, nijue kama nitavaa suti. 
kama wewe ni mkulima unahitaji nivae mavazi ya na labda hata nikute na jembe ama wewe ni mechanic unahitaji nije kusaidia gari lako limebomoka nikusaidie kufanya nini so ni lazima niulize kwa nini unaniita hilo swali kwa nini unaniita ni la muhimu umuhimu wake ni nini kwa sababu ni lazima nijue nitajitayarisha namna gani kuja kukusaidia. Wana sasa sana. Now let us read it. Revelations 19:7 the Bible says Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamp is come and his wife has made herself ready. Wana sasa sana. Kile ambacho muaminio wakati wa mwisho anatazamia. Believe you me. If the Lord Jesus Christ starts acherewe kuja wewe na mimi tutalala kaburini. It is common to human beings. Amen. Now but we know that the grand awaiting is for the rapture whereby those who are in Christ shall not see death or suffer death but at the trump or the trumpet they shall be caught away amen before that marriage supper what happens to the bride and the bridegroom when they marry the next thing they go to honeymoon amen Let me ask you believers. Honeymoon huwa mnaenda kwa nyumba yenu ama wakati mwingi mnaenda mahali. Si mnaenda mahali kisha mnarudi kwenu. The rapture is honeymoon. Amen. And when I look at the word of God, the honeymoon will last seven years. These seven years in accordance with the book of Daniel are actually the 70th week of Daniel. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, these nine days were fulfilled. Amen. Because the 70 years pertains to the Jews and not to the Gentiles. So at the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ until the time when he departed on earth sixty nine days when he was set at the cross sixty nine days we are accomplished we have one calendar year not one calendar year a gentile or the the gregory or the the roman calendar But according to the Jewish calendar. Are we together? Now, for those who would like to read to understand it well, I have not read it for the so many years past. In fact, for more than 10 or 15 years I have not read it. But I would want you to look for a book. The 70th week of Daniel that was preached by William Marion Branham. Amen. Now, Let me mention something here. Whenever a prophet of God is speaking, God allows every servant of God, a prophet, to speak dual statements. One statement carrying two messages. Are you hearing me well? I know this is teaching. Kindly take it. Amen. Now God also whenever he speaks to any servant he has two messages that he deliver one message is to the seed of God the other message is to the seed of the serpent God does not give us two words ametupatia biblia moja because all of us have to be judged by one bible whether you are catholic 
Whether you are Buddhist. Amen. Whoever you are, the manual of God for humanity is the word of God. If you are a child of God, you hear where the language of your father and you understand. If you are not a child of God, you always hear in the flesh. That is why when he tell them, you must eat the flesh of the son of man. They say, you want to turn us into cannibals. When he says, you must drink the blood of the son of man. Wanasema kwamba wewe ni kichwa vya damu. Bwana Sisan. Mungu anatumia ujumbe mmoja. Wewe mwenyewe ujiweke upande wako. Every prophet of God because it is God who speaks through them. He speaks in the same manner. William Bradham Branham preached that message the 70th week of Daniel and he showed very clearly that we have one week that is remaining. Amen? I want us to go and read that message. Let me stop at that. I don't want to say something here. Let's go back. So, Christians can do anything they want. Believers will not do anything that they want. You must chew the card and you must also have your, your hoofs parted. That is not a request, my brother, my sister. Let me tell you where we are entering. It is where backbiting in the church should stop. It is where revivory in the church will stop. Amen. Habari ya mvutano katika kanisa inastahili ikwame. Amen. If God ever called you to, 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 to serve God, if God ever called you to serve him, you will serve him. Hebu ni kuambia jambo lingine pia. God can prepare you for 8 years to use you for one day only. Amen. Let me tell you, there is no one that had a difficult time like Moses knowing that he was born under a sign knowing that he is a prophet of God, knowing that he is the deliverer, then when he is 40 years and he thinks that it is time to serve God, anaanza na anaanza na kuwa. Then, wakati ya mejulikana, anaacha kila kitu na anatoroka na anaenda kwa Jethro. Mwana sisana. Read in the book of Genesis chapter, in the book of Exodus chapter 12. I think it should be somewhere like uh, it is important that we read that one. It's good, it's good that you hear this. And I know what I'm supposed to be preaching, redemption through or by the blood, but when God gives you something to say, it has a meaning. Uh, Exodus chapter 3, chapter 12. I hope that is where I'm talking. Um, I want to uh, where, Os, where Moses went to to Jethro's uh, to live with the Jethro's family. That is verse. Someone get it for me. Yeah? Chapter 2. Yeah, so it is chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. Yeah, it must be chapter 2. Ninatazama habari ya kutoka where is it? 
about. Then that must be chapter, verse 20. Verse 11. No, somewhere where it says, and he was contented to live with him. Yeah, it could be there, but, but verse, verse 21, yeah, there it goes. Verse 21. Exodus. What does it say? Yeah? Two verse. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at it, but I'm not finding it. Okay, just read it. 2, verse 21. The Bible says, And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. Now, listen to that. Do you know the meaning of content? Do you know the meaning of content is taking something lower than, you know, it's compromising. Amen. So he compromised being called to be a prophet, being called to be a deliverer, yet he's running away from his assignment. Now, I can't even put as a maivio, and I want to come back and stay here. Kuka katika nyumba ya jethro na ache muito ameito na mungu. When God calls you to serve Him. Sometimes you might live and think that God did not call you. Do you hear me? When God is coming to call Moses, it is when he is 80 years. When was he called to serve God? When he was born, he was born a deliverer. He was born a prophet of God. When is he serving God? When he is 80 years plus. Amen? Now, we must have an understanding in the word of God. In the same way, there were no praise and worship in the garden of Eden. In the garden of Eden, there were no miracle signs and wonders. Church, do you hear this? There were no miracle signs and wonders. There were no need of miracles. There were no need of wonders. There, were no, there was no need of speaking in tongues. There was no need of a help. All these things were not necessary. Do you know when they became a necessity? When a man transgressed. Amen. I want you to know with all your heart. The Bible says everything else. Including miracle signs and wonders. The only thing that shall remain is the word of God. And that is the reason why. Neno linaonyesha sana habari ya wanyama ambao wanakula nyasi wanaweka kisha wanaitoa wanaanza kutafakali na wawe kwa to zao zimegawanywa ili waache na mambo ya dunia kwa sababu neno la Mungu linapokuja ndani yako linakupatia ushawishi wa kutoka katika mambo ya dunia na uishi kama mwaminio Hakuna bali popote ya mbapo Tumeambiwa bali ya kutamani hivi vipawa Mwana usia sana Lakini tunasahiri tuwe katika neno la mungu Neno la mungu lizae vipawa Usitafuta vipawa Mwana usia sana Chenye unasahiri kutafuta na ukazie mkazo Ni kutafuta ujazo wa roo mtakatifu Adamu na hawa walishirikiana kufunika uchi wao. Hiyo inaonyesha mfano wa kristo na kanisa lake. Wanashikamania baada ya kuoana. And how do we get married to Christ? 
when we come to Christ through salvation, amen, then we have the cover of the word of God. Bwana sasa sana. Na hilo neno la Mungu yeye Kristo anakupatia neno na we unalichukua unaanza kuishi maisha ya neno. Diposa ukitazama katika kitabu cha Timotheo na ukitazama katika kitabu cha maandiko ya Yohana moja, tatu inasema kwamba na yote anao mwito ama anaye mtazamo huu wa kwamba Kristo anarudi yeye mwenyewe hujitakasa. Kristo hata kutakasa. Anakupatia neno we mwenyewe ujitakase. Mtoto akiwa mchanga huwa anaoshwa na mama yake ama baba yake. Wakati anapokomaa amejua amejua umuhimu wa usafi, anaanza kujiosha. Ni Mwito wa Mungu kukupatia neno kukuleta bahari ambako pana neno la mwisho ama injili ya urejesho ni chukumu lako uweze